Tracking, alerting, protecting. This is WKYT This Morning. Good morning to you at 5 a.m. We're delighted you're with us bright and early. I'm Bill Bryant. And I'm Rebecca Smith. A little bit of change is in store for the weather that you'll need to be aware of as you head out maybe to work or to go shopping in these uh, last few days up to Christmas. Yeah, it's been tranquil, you know, the last uh, few days. We've had some cloud cover and that kind of thing, but otherwise a mild. But things are starting to change. It looks like that will continue right into Christmas. Let's check in with Micah now. He is in our first alert weather center. Good morning. Hey, good morning, guys. Yeah, one week away from Christmas Eve and and as you would have it, well, we have some flurries flying around. We have two snow chances as we make our way uh, throughout the weekend. So it's just going to start increasing. And let me just say, just looking over the latest weather models, virtually all of them showing a big system next week there for Christmas Eve and Christmas Day. Obviously, we'll go over that in just a few minutes. But right now, currently on first alert defender live radar, a few flurries flying around. It's not much. A few flakes over towards, say, Morgan County. And then as you look at your temperatures, sitting there in the mid-30s. Now, here's the deal. We won't really rise that much. Right around 36 degrees, chilly today. And also with the little breeze, clouds overhead, that will give us some flurries. But enough about the flurries. That's not going to do anything to us. These snow chances will. They'll have an impact on our forecast. And I'll show you that along with Christmas Eve forecast coming up in about 10 minutes. All right, Micah, thank you very much. Here's the latest from WKYT. We are tracking the investigation this morning into an accident that sent some Anderson County firefighters to the hospital. Witnesses tell us their fire truck ran off Puckett Road and then it crashed into a tree. WKYT's Sean Moody at the live desk with the latest information on the crash. Good morning, Sean. Good morning, Bill and Rebecca. Witnesses said six firefighters had to go to the hospital after the fire truck crashed into a tree last night. We're told they're all from Station 2 in Anderson County. We're told those firefighters were heading out to help another crew at a wreck. People who live along Puckett Road said the truck went off the road and into a ditch before hitting a tree. The man who owns the property where the truck crashed said the firefighters sitting on the passenger side of the truck had to be cut from the vehicle. He said that firefighter appeared to have suffered the worst of the injuries. Now, in all, he said six of them had to go to the hospital. And uh, caved the whole uh, top of the fire truck in. And then they ended up having to come out and do the, uh, to get the firemen out of the truck, had to cut one of the firemen out of the fire truck. They had to cut a couple of limbs off of the, the fire truck. It was sitting about right here. It's ended up right past the mailbox here. And they ended up pulling the, uh, the tree, what was left of the tree, they pulled it up with the wrecker. Now, we're still trying to get in touch with the Anderson County Fire Department and with Kentucky State Police, who we're told are investigating the accident. At the live desk, Sean Moody, WKYT. Well, it's something that hasn't been seen in Kentucky for about 200 years until now. Fish and Wildlife captured and killed a mountain lion in Bourbon County. Mountain lions are not native to Kentucky. Fish and Wildlife says it's the first one seen here since the 1800s. They say a woman walking her dog spotted the animal in a tree behind her home. A man who lives nearby tells us the woman had a smartphone and managed to take a picture. Many of you have been asking us why fish and wildlife officials killed the mountain lion, so we asked them that question, and they told us that they felt the mountain lion was a threat to the public, so they said they had to shoot it. That is a, a animal that is put on this earth to, to eat, um, and it being relatively close to a, a human city, um, focal center, human activity, darting it, the time constraints involved in waiting for it to get there, the decision was made to euthanize the animal, and um, it was the right decision. Fish and wildlife officials also say they did not have any tranquilizers with them on Monday night, and they worried if they waited too long, the mountain lion could have gotten away and potentially hurt someone. Fish and wildlife officials say that animal weighed around 125 pounds. They're looking into the possibility that someone had it as a pet. Hmm. Well, it is the season for crooks. With Christmas less than two weeks away, you could actually, odds are, be target for mail theft. Right. Lexington police have arrested another suspected mail thief. It's the second this month. WKYT's Whitney Wetzel is live with more on the latest theft. Hey, Whitney, good morning. Good morning. Well, police say that man stole a FedEx box from the front porch of a Lexington home. When officers went to William Davis's home, they reportedly saw that package when he opened the front door. Police say Davis was also caught on video actually stealing the package. Now, with Christmas about a week away now, Grinches have been stealing deliveries from doorsteps all across the country. Some people have even started installing security cameras to catch the thieves, like in this case. 
Of course, that isn't an option for everyone, though, so to make sure your presents actually make it under the tree this year, here are a couple of tips. Post office managers say the first line of defense is to talk to your letter carrier and let them know if there's a different package or a different place, rather, where your package should be left. You should also consider safe places where your gifts could be delivered. A lot of people just have them mailed to their place of work. You can also have packages mailed to a neighbor or relative who will be home during the day. UPS has a signature required option, so your package doesn't end up in the wrong hands. And they also recommend buying insurance on your deliveries, which is usually pretty cheap. Now, as for Davis, he's charged with theft of mail matter, and he will be arraigned on that charge later this afternoon. Live in Lexington, Whitney Wetzel, WKYT. Whitney, thank you. For the second time in the last few weeks, police are investigating a crime at an Eastern Kentucky business. This time, investigators say burglars broke into Adams Market in Leslie County. The burglars stole two garbage bags full of cigarette cartons on Monday night. Two weeks ago, someone robbed the store at gunpoint. The store owner says she's had enough. It hurts everybody in the community. Uh, we, there's several other stores. You know, I'm sure they're waiting. Just waiting to see if it's going to happen to them, and it's, uh, it's just bad to think that it's people you know that does it. Police have arrested a man for the robbery, but they have not made any arrests for the burglary. The store owner is offering a reward for information that leads to an arrest. We have a health alert to pass along about a stomach bug that is going around Lexington. The Fayette County Health Department is tracking a shigalosis outbreak. 150 cases have been reported this year. The department says normally Lexington only has two or three a year. The illness is caused by the Shigella bacteria, which is easily spread. There's no word on what caused the spike in cases, but since the bacteria is often spread in daycares, they're taking extra precautions. So you just have to make sure to stay right on top of that. And again, with proper hand washing and, and sanitizing and you know, wiping down all the surfaces and things like that, when you're in a, in a child care setting, you, just, you have to just make sure that those things are priority. The bacteria is spread person to person. Doctors say hand washing is the best way to prevent it from spreading. Bergen Independent Schools will be closed the rest of the week because of illness there. The Bergen superintendent says student attendance has been dropping over the last week and now fell to 80% yesterday. Custodians will be cleaning the schools today, but again, Bergen Independent Schools will be closed the rest of the week.